Hi everyone, in this video we'll be talking about another sexually transmitted infection which is the Mycoplasma genitalium. The Mycoplasma genitalium is a bacterial infection that is caused by the bacteria Mycoplasma genitalium. In this video we'll be discussing the clinical presentation, the diagnosis, management, follow-up and precautions that can be taken to prevent getting Mycoplasma genitalium. Mainly, Mycoplasma genitalium is an established cause of urethritis, cervicitis, and pelvic inflammatory disease, and is also associated with preterm delivery and miscarriage. Mycoplasma genitalium, in regards of presentation, the symptoms they can differ from males and to females. It can be asymptomatic. In both, in males, there can be dysuria, urethral discharge, and possibly proctitis. In females, vaginal discharge, pelvic pain, intermenstrual bleeding, postcoital bleeding, and possibly dysuria. As for the complications, significance in epididymal orchitis is unknown, while pelvic inflammatory disease in females, infertility, and ectopic pregnancy, and there is also a possible role in tubal factor infertility. The diagnosis can be made using the nucleic acid amplification test, NAAT. The specimen in males can be obtained through first pass urine. In females, it can be through an endocervical swab, a vaginal swab, which can be clinician or self-collected, or it also can be a first pass urine, although it's not as sensitive as vaginal swab. Regarding the management of Mycoplasma genitalium, macrolide resistance is likely to be present in at least half of infections in Australian cities, based on studies from the eastern states. At one centre, resistance was present in 50% of infections in heterosexuals and 80% in men who have sex with men. However, resistance to fluoroquinolones is present in 10-15% to of infections. Doxycycline is ineffective in two-thirds of infections but will lower bacterial load in most cases, increasing the likelihood of cure with a subsequent antibiotic. Without access to resistance testing, it is reasonable to assume macrolide resistance in infections persisting after failure of azithromycin and in men who have sex with men, so we assume macrolide resistance in these cases. So if the mycoplasma genitalium is macrolide susceptible. We treat it with doxycycline 100 mg twice a day for 7 days followed by azithromycin 1 gram start, then 500 mg daily for 3 days, which is a total of 2.5 grams of azithromycin. So that's the recommended treatment. In cases of macrolide resistance, the recommended treatment is doxycycline 100 mg twice a day for 7 days, followed by moxifloxacin 400 mg daily for 7 days. And finally for cases of pelvic inflammatory disease due to mycoplasma genitalium, the recommended treatment is moxifloxacin 400 mg daily for 14 days. Other important immediate management advice is we should advise no condomless sex until tested for cure and that is 14 days after completion of treatment. The second advice is no sex with untested previous sexual partners. We should also provide the patients with fact sheet As for notifying, mycoplasma genitalium is not a notifiable condition. And finally, for contact tracing, 
In heterosexuals, the risk of pelvic inflammatory disease and reproductive complications suggests a greater need to trace, test, and treat infected contacts. The time period for contact tracing is unknown. As for follow-up, as we said, we need to do a test of cure, which is 14 days after completion of treatment, and that is through a nucleic acid amplification test. And that concludes this video. Thank you very much for watching.